Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to the United Stand. This is your latest Manchester United news as we discuss Frankie de Jong, who's spoken publicly for the first time since the transfer window opened, uh, closed about what went on this summer. There's also some talks today that people want to discuss around whether Manchester United are about to receive another bid, well, a, a bid to buy Manchester United. We'll give you the, uh, the details of what we understand is going on with that. There's also a little bit about Ronaldo, and I'm sure there's a lot from you in relation to the video I did earlier uh, in relation to Harry Maguire sources. Uh, you know, basically, uh, more players are um, coming out and saying stuff that I don't think will please Eric Ten Hag. So lots to get into. We'll get into these uh, direct quotes from Frankie de Jong, obviously, uh, straight away. But before we do that, you can see the show is sponsored by Boohoo Man and I'm wearing some Boohoo Man clobber as well. Uh, Boohoo Man Active is all about looking good and feeling great and as the weather gets colder and there's no better time to get yourself some brand new active wear whether you're out playing five a side, running, down gym, whatever you're up to. And because Boohoo Man are sponsoring the show it means it's time for some Manchester United trivia. We've not had it for a few weeks. This week we're seeing if you guys can guess which United manager Boohoo Man are actively talking about from the below clues. So, here we go. I was born on the 1st of November 1963. I played 345 games for United. I left United for Barcelona in 1986 before rejoining in 1988. In total, I scored 120 goals for Manchester United. I won two Premier League titles, two FA Cups, one League Cup, one Super Cup and a Cup Winners Cup in which he scored. Uh, I left Manchester United for the final time in 1998 when I joined Chelsea. Who am I? Um, you know what? They're not a United manager. They are a manager. They're a former United player, but they never managed United as far as I'm aware. And I'm, I'm actually, I don't think they left in 1998. I think they left in 1995. So there's a couple of inaccuracies there in our writer's uh, script. Maybe you want to check that. A um, lot of people saying Sparky, a lot of people saying Mark Hughes. I think he left in 1995 because I think he left with uh, Paul Ince and Konchelskis. I don't think he left in 98, but I, I will stand corrected if somebody can tell me I'm wrong about that. But of course, it is Mark Hughes. Um, as always, Boohoo Man have given United Stand a discount for this video by scanning the QR code next to me or clicking the link in the description and using the code GOLDBRIDGE, you get 40% off at Boohoo Man, excluding certain sale items. Thank you very much to Boohoo Man, as always, for being interactive with our audience whilst also supporting the channel. Remember, you can get 40% off. You can get tops like this and, you know, all sorts of stuff. 40% off. Scan the QR code or go through the link in the description. Loads of stuff you can get hold of, including something like this. Nearly lift my top up then. Woo! But, uh, no, it's nice, isn't it? I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Right, let's get on with the show. Big shout out to Boohoo Man and hopefully somebody in the chat will let us know whether it, it was 1995. Definitely 95, says Tim. I, I'm pretty sure it was. It's always good when you know the answer and they've got it wrong, isn't it? Right, let's fly straight into what Donny, uh, Frankie de Jong has said. So, look, Manchester United had spent all summer trying to sign Frankie de Jong and didn't get him. What has Frankie de Jong had to say? Remember, he's on Dutch duty. I Look, I think international breaks are always very interesting. You do tend to get looser tongs from players when they're on international duty and not under the scrutiny and confines of their club uh, rules, etc. And uh, certainly we've had uh, comments from Frankie de Jong coming in. And obviously, I mean, not entirely uh, positive around Barcelona. He was asked about the transfer window. He said, I always wanted to stay at Barcelona. And this is why I always remained calm in the summer. Uh, I can't give too much details away. But look, the club has its own ideas and I have my own ideas too. And sometimes this clashes with each other. But at the end of the day, things went okay. And at the end of the day, there's a song that comes to mind. I fought the law and the law won. Um, well, Barcelona fought De Jong and De Jong won. That, I think that's basically the message. He never wanted to leave Barcelona. Barcelona wanted to sell him. Manchester United wanted to buy him. That's what Barcelona wanted to do. He didn't want it. They had different views and he won. Basically, that's what happened. So, look, um, it's... <laughs> It's interesting to to hear from him. He also had some other things to say. Uh, effectively, he was saying that um, 
you know, um, he was asked at one point, it seemed like your own choice was irrelevant, irrelevant, as if you were being toyed with. He said, there are so many programmes and papers who make things up. A lot has happened. And yes, things were a little troubled, but my own decision was clear from the start. He wanted to stay at Barcelona. Uh, on his game time, he says, I've played eight games this season, from which I've started four. In the biggest game against Bayern, I came on as a sub, but I want to play from the beginning. I just have to make sure that I can recover my starting spot. Um, and he says that between me and my teammates, nothing has changed. And uh, you were linked to Manchester United almost every day in the summer. He said, I already decided in May that I wanted to stay at Barcelona and I never changed that decision. So it is interesting if you're interested in that. I mean, I think you should be interested in it. We spent all bloody summer on it. And um, it's very interesting when you hear from the player himself that um, he never, ever wanted to leave Barcelona. And that was his decision. And I think the most telling part in there is that we had different ideas, but ultimately ended up OK. Effectively, he got what he wanted. Barcelona wanted to sell him. Man United wanted to buy him. He wanted to stay at Barcelona. He got what he wanted. Frankie de Jong won. And as far as I understand it, he's not taking a wage cut either. So, look... Um, it's one to watch. Um, Barcelona tried to move him on. He d he resisted. He didn't want to leave. You do wonder what Man United's part in this was, though. I mean, bringing it back to the United on the United stands, we know what Frankie de Jong has said. He didn't want to go, and he won. Barcelona wanted to sell him, and he won. What was our role in this? You know, what was our ro role in this? It, it You know, it's effectively, what it's like is knocking on the door of the person you want to marry's house... Them saying no, and then their father saying, before you leave, let's go and have a beer. You go and have a beer with them, and they say, look, I think you'd be a great, great, great husband for my wife, for my, for my daughter, for my wife, for my daughter. Um, leave it to me. We'll, we'll, we'll get this sorted. Well, they don't sound that interested. Trust me. Do you want to marry them? Yes, I do. Well, I'll get this sorted. Don't you worry about it. And then you go around telling all your mates, yep, yeah, they're going to marry me. You do realise they don't want to. They're telling everyone you don't want to. Trust me, this deal's going to happen. This will happen. Uh, you know, you send Murta and uh, Murta and Arnold. They 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 go off to the best uh, bridal shop in London to buy the dress and everything. It's definitely going to happen. Look at them; they're even buying a wedding dress. They must be. It must be going to happen. They're saying they don't want to do it, but look at them. Look at them. They've even booked the venue. They booked the DJ. They've got Ollie Murs doing the songs. Everything. It's obviously going to happen. No, it's not. They don't want to marry her. And and that's basically what United did, didn't they? They took Barcelona's word and didn't bother to see what Frankie de Jong wanted by the looks of it. But look, um, it gives a little bit of clarity on something that we pretty much knew. But it's nice to get it from the player. He never wanted to come. We got led down the path. Well done, Man United. Absolute prats. In the summer, would you rather have De Jong or Bellingham? Both are going to be expensive and both are very good, says Ivan. I, I, I think we need to move on from De Jong. I think Eric Ten Hag wanted him because it's a player that he knows everything about from his time at Ajax. I don't... Um, I just think we were very naive. And I think this reflects... I don't really want to attach the, uh, Ten Hag to this, although as I know some people will. But for me, it reflects just how bad we are at transfers. We are terrible at transfers. And this is not this summer. This is not last summer. This is every bloody year for about a decade. We're just bad at transfers. And I think that, you know, the blind leading the blind comes to mind because I just think the fact that we were flying over to Barcelona to finalise a deal for somebody who didn't want to come just shows how small time we actually are. Um, we've been humiliated by Dortmund. We've been humiliated by Ajax. We've been humiliated by Sporting. We've been humiliated by De Jong. We just don't seem to be very good at what we're doing. And look, everybody approaches everything very differently. If I was the director of football of Manchester United and I was involved in this deal, I'd have it... I mean, the way transfers happen, if you don't know, and I'm sure many of you do is you basically speak to the player first. The normal transfer transaction is you speak to the player, you speak to the agent, we'd like the move. Okay, and the difficult bit is convincing the club to sell. That's that's how a deal works. Now, if Barcelona ring you up and say, we want to sell you De Jong, you speak to bloody De Jong and you make sure he wants to come to the club. And you know, maybe De Jong said to them, look, if, if they force me out of this club, I'll come to Man United, but I don't want to go and I'm going to dig my heels in. I'd have gone, right, we're out. We're out of this deal. We, we, we're not doing this deal because we need players who want to come to the club, not players that are kicking and screaming. I mean, basically, it's abduction. It's kidnapping. You know, it's De Jong napping. Uh, what one player would you go for if you can choose? Great show, Mark. Many people watching from Iceland. Says John, love Iceland. Love to go there. 
Um, not talking about the supermarket. I think their pizzas are crap. But uh, Iceland, the country, lovely. Hi, Mark. Surely, surely Eric Ten Hag will hit the roof with them, Harry Maguire leaks. Could he be stripped of the captaincy? Plus, would you do a top five right back video compared to the low? Yeah, we're going to do that, Leo J. That, that, that is coming in the next couple of days. Obviously, we've done the goalkeeper one yesterday. Um, I want to come back to HM. So we'll come back to that and the fallout of what might happen from the club. Um, should have went for Neves instead of wasting time on De Jong, says Reese Bailey. Um, yeah, just, just to answer that question, we do need a midfielder. I think Bellingham is far-fetched and I think De Jong needs to be moved on from. He doesn't. He's clearly not a player that wants to come to Manchester United. And look, the first thing we need to do is get back in the Champions League and be competitive. We can't keep begging players that want to play Champions League football to come to your Europa League club. We've got to get back in the Champions League. We've, you know what? We've got to put the hard yards in. I feel like Man United are wanting to cheat code their way back to the top. You know, we are a club that was crap last year. We are a club that's in the Europa League and we are a club that's doing a massive rebuild. I feel that we need to build the foundations in the footballing sense. I feel that we need to work hard. I almost feel that buying Bellingham or De Jong or Pogba like we have done in the past, it's a bit of a cheat code. It's almost like we want to fast track our way back to the top. I would like to see us putting the foundations in. I think Ericsson on a free, Martinez, Anthony, Malasia, they feel more in keeping with what our rebuild should be. Players ready to take a step up. And look, there are similarities between what Rangnick wanted to do. Obviously, Rangnick and Ten Hag would have had very different ideas about the players they wanted, but ultimately they do want the same thing. They want United back on top and they want to bring players in that they think are ready. So for me, I would be more interested in a midfielder that really um, suits Manchester United um, that isn't massively you know, um, expensive, um, if you know what I mean. Um, so Carl says, surely though, one text from Eric Ten Hag to De Jong and they know he wants to stay. It defines logic that we chased him all summer. It does, Carl. And I think just before we move on from Frankie De Jong, that the, 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 the issue is probably uh, to do with, um, I would imagine something was said like, I, I would imagine something was said along the lines of, if Barcelona forced me out, I'll come to Man United, which is a big difference between I want to come to Manchester United and I don't want to come to Manchester United, isn't it? So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, hi, Mark. Just joined. Uh, um, is Frankie de Jong or is it still not clear? Uh, he's not joining, mate. The transfer window is closed. You might want to listen to the start. He's basically spoken about how he wanted to stay at Barcelona and that was always his intention. And effectively, what Frankie de Jong is basically saying is Barcelona tried to sell me. I wanted to stay. I won in the end. Um which is basically what happened, isn't it? Have you heard about the Sir Jim Ratcliffe bid and the meetings? Says PK. Uh, let's get our next Martinez, Malasia, and Ericsson who genuinely want to join us in the Eric Ten Hag project. Move on from Frankie de Jong. There's always the next one, says Man. Yeah, and I think that's what we need to do. For you, who was better, Vidic or Stam? Both elites, says Glenn. Uh, for me, Vidic is probably my best, uh, my favourite Manchester United centre back of the last 20 years. Um, it's just my style of centre back, Vidic. I absolutely loved Vidic. So, yeah, that, that would be who I would go for um, on this bid. Right, okay, so a few people have contacted me today or, or messaged me about this talk of a consortium that wants to buy 26% of Manchester United and then get more people involved and basically it will have fan ownership, etc. cetera. Um, as I understand it, and I have heard about this for a little while now, um, that's not Sir Jim Radcliffe. That, that's something completely different. So uh, look, I, what I would say is, um, there are a few sort of rumours floating around at the moment. Uh, a bid from the Middle East. Um, obviously, Sir Jim Radcliffe is interested. Um, there's a, an American consortium as well, I believe. And then there is this other option, which is the one that we think was mentioned on the Webby and O'Neill channel today as well. Um, that it's, it's basically... Look, I don't want to give too much away about it because, to be honest with you, I don't know loads about it. A couple of people mentioned messaged me about it about two months ago. Um, and I, I just said, look, I can't start talking about this on the United stand because if this turns out to be, um, if it doesn't come to fruition and people invest in it or anything like that or, or invest their time and belief in it and it doesn't happen, you sort of end up getting a bit of stick and, you know, you, your clusters, you know, causing trouble. 
a little bit like what's happened with Michael Knighton. You know, when he first came out, everyone was very excited about it. Now people are saying he's, you know, it's just a load of bollocks, which it, I don't think it, I don't think it necessarily is. I think with these things, what as fans, we just need to wait and see what happens. Um, I don't know whether you watched the interview this afternoon with Rob Dawson um, and, and Adam, and he was talking about it. And I think his approach is probably the one that I have and many of you have, is that, 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 that there is without doubt um, a financing issue at Manchester United. And I'm not talking about buying players, I'm talking about rebuilding Old Trafford. I'm talking about the structure that has to be done. I saw pictures today and it, and it depressed me. And um, it was pictures of Anfield. Uh, they're building the, the, one of the stands at the back and they're still keeping the ground open while they're doing it and they're building behind it. And I'm like, that, that, that's another massive investment into the infrastructure of Liverpool Football Club and Anfield and it's going to expand Anfield and Old Trafford is just rusting away and, and it shouldn't be happening and the Glazers can't afford it and sponsors are starting to step away and, you know, like Rob Dawson said, Stopping people going to the ground is a very difficult thing because, you know, it's like a, it's, it's, it's a religion to people. Manchester United is a religion, isn't it? And, and Old Trafford's the cathedral that people have been going to for, for most of their lives. You, you, but, but that's very difficult to stop people doing on a consistent basis. But sponsors walking away from Manchester United, that, that's going to hurt the Glazers. So there's definitely... You're going to have to be patient unless you get lucky, is what I'm saying. I, I think most people... Even if somebody got an itchy nose, even if somebody uh, put in a bid for Manchester United and it got accepted tomorrow, it it could take a year or two years because it's got to go through lawyers and all sorts. So it could be a very long process. How quickly Chelsea got bought was because of you know uh, sanctions and speed, and Chelsea needed a new owner very very quickly, and the government assisted and helped out, and there was lots of things done. This would be one buyer selling to another buyer. I think it's going to take time. But I think in relation to the Glazers, people are just anxious because they're like, when's it going to happen and who's it going to happen with? And there's probably five or six options on the table for the Glazers. And first of all, they've got to take one. And second of all, we've got to hope that it's the right one. But I think it's going to take time. And there's always the option that the Glazers might put feelers out and then find a way to keep the club. Um, what we don't want to do is what happens with Barcelona, where they get this private financing that comes in and allows them to keep the club. Where you know, give us two hundred million now, and in ten years' time, we'll give you four hundred million pound back because the club will be in some sort of super league and TV deals will will have tripled. So everything's on the table at the moment. That's better than probably where we were ten years ago, where nothing was on the table and the Glazers had no cha no no thought of selling. Um, discussing the the different options at the moment is somewhat irrelevant because there are different people who want to buy United, whether you want something like what Newcastle have got uh, and Man City have got, Middle East investment, um, whether you want, you know, multinational investment, American investment, British owner like Sir Jim Radcliffe who may need a consortium as well, um, some sort of fan share investment. There's lots of options. And I think at the moment... I wouldn't say I'm relaxed about it because I, I would like to see Manchester United under ownership that wants to invest in the club. And I would like to see Old Trafford being renovated or rebuilt yesterday, not next year or the year after that. So there is a, a time crisis to it, but I suppose the important thing is that it's in the it's in the arena, isn't it? It's being discussed a lot, and I think that's the main thing. Uh, Josh says, great interview by Adam with Rob Dawson earlier today. Seen him and Beth at Old Trafford earlier. Red Army, says Josh. P.S. Don't forget Glazers out, which we've just been talking about there. Yeah, do watch the interview with Rob Dawson. There was loads of stuff covered. Um, if you've got a spare bit of time later on tonight or tomorrow morning or whatever, give it a listen. There's some really good stuff in there about Ronaldo. Um, Rob Dawson saying that he doesn't think that Ronaldo will leave. He thinks that Ronaldo will end up staying this season. Um, and there was a tweet that went out tonight about that as well. Um, where did the extra pounds come from for our transfers, says Dennis G? I, I don't know, mate. I, I don't know. Um, the, 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 where Manchester United... Well, look, we're talking about the Glazers here, aren't we? I, I want to go to this back to this Harry Maguire thing because someone did a super chat about it. Um, effectively, Manchester United were trying to sign an Artovic and Rabio for about... 25 30 million combined they suddenly found 160 million to buy Anthony and Casemiro I think this was prompted by 
the Sir Jim Radcliffe story. I do. I think United just thought, shit, let's spend a load of money. We'll get it back in future summers by not spending. But what, what what's very clear to me, because we need to live in the now and not in the past, what's very, very clear to me as a United fan, and I'm sure everybody else feels the same, there's two core principles here that, that have to be adhered to and have to be the motivators and have to be the vision. The first one is that Ten Hag is right at the start of his journey and clearly needs to buy at least another seven or eight players and clearly needs to sell eight or nine players. To do that, you need investment because you've got to take the loss on the players you're kicking out and you've got to bring the funds in to bring him the players that he wants. It would be an ideal world if you could do what Liverpool did, where you sell a Coutinho for 150 million and you buy three or four players with that money. But we don't have anybody that's going to bring any money in. Even if, like, you know, Maguire's not going to bring any money in, Luke Shaw's not going to bring any money in, Fred's not going to bring any money in, and we don't want to sell any of our major assets. So we need, we need money for Ten Hag to do his job. He needs to buy seven or eight players over the next 18 months and he needs to sell eight or nine players over the next 18 months and both of them are going to cost us money because we're going to have to take losses on the players that we sell. For Ten Hag to be successful in his job, that needs to happen. That needs hundreds of millions of pounds. The second thing is we need to do something about the stadium and that's going to cost hundreds of millions of pounds. So two things will happen. We'll either get the investment to do those things through new ownership or we won't get investment to do those things. The club will continue to decay and Ten Hag will end up getting sacked and we'll, keep, we'll stay with the Glazers. But it's the Glazers who need to be advised about this because you either sell the club and let, it, and let people invest in it or you don't sell the club and things are going to get a lot worse. And, and I think there's two options there, isn't there? Ultimately. Um, Sal Maguire for a packet of crisps as Devils 58. They were still going to spend out of the Champions League. They took too long to get players in early pre-season. And Ralph Rangnick said United needed 9 or 10 players, says Lils. And I think Ten Hag agrees with you, Lils. I think that Ten Hag knows he needs 9 or 10 players, but we were never going to get 9 or 10 players. Even if Rangnick stayed, we wouldn't have got 9 or 10 players in season one. We got five. We need another five. Um... I would say we need another two in the January transfer in there and then another five next summer. Chelsea sold for two and a half billion plus one and a half billion for upgrades. That means United would go for four billion plus two million for billion for players. Stadium and training grounds, says Tom Bale. So Gem's net worth is 13 and a half billion. He will need to spend six billion plus, says Tumbleweed. In relation to Sir Jim Radcliffe, I don't think he has the money on his own to buy United. I think that needs to be funded in a different way i think he could probably put up a couple of billion but i think you know the rest of it needs to come in from from other areas but my hunch is that man united still will be sold um i'm not going to promise that there won't be a twist in the road where we take a different direction but i i feel that we are approaching a roundabout and at a roundabout there's two or three junctions it might even be a five way uh roundabout but at a roundabout there's normally three three ways off it or four if you go back round again Going back round again is the Glazers, and then I think you've got three other options. There's an option where the Glazers stay and get private investment. There's an option where the Glazers sell to somebody else who's not, who are the same as the Glazers. And then there's the option we all want, where they sell and we get a proper owner in who wants to invest in the football club. But something's got to happen. We, 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 I think the positive is, although it might not end up being a positive, but the positive is something, and even the Glazers know this, something has to happen with Old Trafford. It cannot be left how it is. The, the facilities are not good enough. Uh, no one else has news like this when they're dropped and not playing. It's pathetic, says Venom. Okay, so let's move on. There was a super chat earlier that came in about this Harry Maguire stuff um, saying, should he be kicked out of the club and should he be sold? I've done a video on this already. It's on the channel, so I don't want to go over old ground. But effectively, um, what will the fallout be from it? So, as I said in that video, to summarise, uh, sources, Harry Maguire sources have spoken to ESPN and, and they've thrown De Gea under the bus and previous managers under the bus and players under the bus. And if Harry Maguire swapped with Ruben Diaz, Robin Di Ruben Diaz would be shit and Harry Maguire would be world class. Load of crap. Absolute load of crap. And at, at the very least, should be kept to yourself. Doesn't need to be made public. Um, we, we haven't had Harry Maguire come out and say that it's not true. Um, which he should have done, in my opinion. Uh, it's only my opinion, but this this stuff came out four hours ago. It takes four seconds to pick your phone up and say, right, that's nothing to do with me. Why would he not do that? He needs to do that. What would the fallout be from it? Well, I was told by somebody today that Manchester United, i.e. probably Eric Ten Hag, um, were not happy with the Brandon Williams stuff that came out last night. 
Um, I don't know why they wouldn't be happy about that. Um, I mean, uh, well, I can, I, I can actually. I don't think Manchester United would like a current player to be calling fans idiots on Twitter. Um, because the funny thing is, whether you want to call somebody a top red or, you know, a plastic United fan or whatever the, the derogatory terms that are out there about United fans, most fans I know are on Twitter. Like, season ticket holders for 40 years, fans who've never visited, you know, football Twitter, um, the Red Army, Must, um, the 58, you know, they've all got Twitter accounts. So uh, you can't just blanket say any, any fan on Twitter is an idiot because... There's fans in the ground who'll be shouting and booing when players are being subbed on and dropped and everything like that. So when you call Twitter fans an idiot, you're basically potentially calling a lot of your fan base idiots. So Man United won't like that. They won't like that because what is Manchester United? It's a brand and they use social media a lot. So they won't like players saying that. Uh, of course, there is the the suspicion that Brandon Williams may have had a couple of drinks when he did that interview as well, which if he did, and it's a big if, the club would not be happy about that either. But look, I'd, I've not had that confirmed to me. A couple of people have said to me today that United weren't particularly happy about that interview. I mean, really, I think it's at worst. I, I don't think it was that bad, really. I really don't. But if they did think that that was a bit of an issue, imagine what they're going to think about the Harry Maguire, Harry Maguire, Harry Maguire t- uh, com- comments. Um, look, all I know, and we spoke about it in the summer, is that Manchester United were very fed up and Eric Ten Hag was very unhappy about the things that happened at United last season. Leaks all over the place, uh, bad performances, players falling out, um, people close to players putting information out there. I think we had... Didn't we have Jesse Lingard's brother saying something at one time? Obviously, other places, you know, player sources, maybe family members, maybe agents putting stuff out there. And I know that, especially when United were on tour, this was something that was drilled into the players that this needed to stop. If there were issues, you go to Ten Hag. You do not put stories out through your mates, through your family members, through your agents especially you don't do that about anybody who's a current Man United player or a current Man United manager. It will not be looked on properly. So I don't know that this will be a major issue for Ten Hag. I don't think he'll be happy about it because no manager is happy about negativity that is public negativity when you're trying to rebuild a club and you're actually got a lot of things to be positive about at the moment. Um, It may well be that when Maguire comes back, he just has a word with him and says, look, I don't know what your involvement is in that, but when people are saying Harry Maguire sources, you need to be very careful about what you're saying to people or what people are saying on your behalf because I don't want that at this football club. Um, look, I don't know. As I said in the video, I'm not saying it's Harry Maguire that said it, but ultimately the perception will be that it is because that's how it works. If somebody does an article tomorrow saying that, Bruno, sources close to Bruno Fernandes say that um, Fred's the worst midfielder he's ever played with and belongs in the championship. Might not be Bruno who said it, but the fact that it says Bruno sources, it's just the way of the world, isn't it? So, look, I I, I think that there will be a bit of backlash from it, but we're only an injury away from Varane on this international break and Harry Maguire starting in the Manchester derby. So we've got to be a little bit realistic here. Nobody's getting thrown out of the club even in January. You know, Maguire's here for the season. I just wish he'd focus on himself because if he thinks he's Ruben Diaz, maybe he should start playing like Ruben Diaz. I don't have a problem if he thinks he's as good as Ruben Diaz, but play as well as Ruben Diaz because I don't think you're as good as Ruben Diaz. I sometimes don't think you're as good as Michael Keane. So you've got to prove that. And I I think the great thing is that him being picked for England and Luke Shaw being picked for England is they'll probably play. And... They'll probably play quite well. And then that's something for them to come back with a bit of positive positive uh, attitude to come back to United for a key month. Just a thought, could Old Trafford be closed for health and safety reasons, says Carol? I don't know. I'm not a health and, spe- I'm not a health and safety expert uh, uh, on that one. Um, Mania says, if it means Harry Maguire's getting sold in the summer, it's a great interview. I, I I don't think that. You know what? My 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 major frustration with any of this 
even the Brandon Williams stuff to a certain extent last night is, it's just not the right time. If Brandon Williams had said that, or Diego Delo had said that, or Wan Bissaka had said that, I'm picking fullbacks for some reason. If they'd if they'd have said what was said last night about we don't take any notice of the outside, Harry Maguire's a great player, he's a great captain. Um, if that had been said back in March, I'd understand it a little bit more because there was a lot of toxicity. I don't understand why it's been said now. I, I don't I don't hear people saying Harry Maguire shouldn't be starting games because he's not. He's not been starting games for a month. So I don't really know the relevance of an interview where some where a Man United player starts going on about Twitter idiots and Harry Maguire not starting. Because that Twitter idiot, and I'll take I'll I'll be the idiot if you want, I don't care. But whoever it is, and I think it was a general comment, well the Twitter idiot's not an idiot, they're right. Ultimately, the Twitter idiot who says that Harry Maguire shouldn't be starting games is an idiot because it's about what he does in training. Well, he's not starting games. So the Twitter idiot's right. He's not been starting games and we've been winning games. But that's another thing. Nobody's talking about him not starting games. He started against um, Sociedad. Nobody really cared. He'll probably start against the Cypriot team. No one really cares. Because Varane and Martinez are better. There is no argument to be had. And again, with these Maguire comments... I don't get why they're coming out. I, I, I don't really understand why they're coming out. I don't, I don't really get why people are calling people toxic and idiots and, you know, this is why I'm, I'm as good as Ruben Diaz and this is why this is a problem. We've just won our last four Premier League games. The fan base is in a good place. This talk of the Glazers selling. Ten Hag's the manager that we want. The, 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 the team is acknowledged as a rebuild, but he's actually doing quite well. I think the fan base is probably in a more posi positive position than it's been in for about six years. So I don't really like... The, my big frustration is I don't know why these arguments are being generated by what is effectively the dressing room. Certain players in that dressing room or people close to them are generating arguments. Now, normally, that would be us as fans. A year, you know, last season, we would be generating these arguments about this player's shit, sell this player, this, that and the other. But the fan base is actually in the main, pretty positive at the moment. I mean, you do get your conversations about De Gea, etc. But I think the De Gea thing's for the next summer anyway. That's not Nothing's going to happen about that now. In general, I think the fan base is more positive than it's ever been. I see the vast majority massively behind Ten Hag. The vast majority backed him on his transfers, even though a lot of us thought the De Jong deal was a bit of an odd one. Um, the team is performing well. People have been... People who got a lot of stick last year, like Bruno, Rashford, McTominay, are being given praise this year. I think, I think there's a lot of positivity around the fan base. And that's why when I saw those that article today from sources close to Maguire, I was like, shut up and just keep your gob shut. I understand why ESPN put the article out, because it's going to generate conversation. It's going to get a lot of clicks, and it did. But ultimately... It's like walking into a wedding everyone's enjoying and saying, I've shit in the, mar I've shit in the trifle. Like... Thanks for that. We're having a great time. So, yeah, I just think it was badly timed and it frustrated me for that. I don't I don't think we need to hear it. I, I, you know, it, it's like, take your medicine and make yourself better. There are people on that bench who we know won't be happy, but I think it's good that they're ha unhappy because they've got to work hard themselves. Keen statements which no one saw about him calling out some players led to his contract being terminated. Then this is out in public and if Maguire isn't coming out and distancing himself from this, terminate his contract, says Mojo. I think he will come out and distance himself from it. Um, I don't understand why you wouldn't. I mean, I don't know how the modern world works, but if somebody close to you says to somebody, they've told me this, and then that goes out in public knowledge and everyone's saying, you're an arsehole. Are you going to just put up with it? Or are you going to come out and say, I never said it? I think when you are naming current Man United players as a problem in the team, you've got to come out and act with a bit of class. Um, DJ's just gone off the trifle. I don't know where that saying, saying came from. He's just shit in the trifle. Is that an actual saying or is that a new Goldbridge one? Yeah. We're all having a good time at the party and uh, this person's come in and shat in the trifle. Or even if you don't like that idea, it's like you're at a party, you're having a great time and, you know, the music's rocking 
and then someone puts Ollie Mers on. What's the point? From the last season, Maguire is the only one who isn't being praised. Seems like it's been bitter and wants some sort of attention, says Neil. You know what? But but Luke Shaw. Has Luke Shaw done an interview or is there a Luke Shaw source? I think Luke Shaw's in the same boat as Maguire. They both got dropped at the same time. They're both on England duty. They've both got no way back into the team. They've both been picked constantly for the last three years. I don't see Luke, I don't see Luke Shaw doing stuff. Probably one tomorrow now, but you know, I think Luke Shaw gets a lot of criticism, but actually I think the way he's behaved, um, there's been a lot of pictures of him in the gym and stuff like that, which I know is I've never been a big fan of all these gym pictures. You see it in June, don't you, when they're meant to be on holiday. Oh, they're in the gym. Well, they're professional athletes. But he has held his tongue, which is good. And, um, you know, he's focused. Now, the interesting thing about Luke Shaw is, remember back in March, he did an interview on international duty saying he much prefers being with England than Man United. And that went down really badly. So, look, he's not in the Man United side. He's in the England team. I'm sure he's very happy being with the England team than he is with Man United at the moment. But it also looks like he's getting his head down and working. And that's that's what should be happening. You're responsible for yourself. There's nobody on that Man United bench at the moment that doesn't deserve to be there. Whether it's Ronaldo, Casemiro, Luke Shaw, Harry Maguire. I mean, let's not forget, Ronaldo's on the bench as well. Like, Ronaldo's not starting games for United. So, is there stories coming out from Ronaldo? Is there stories coming out from Casemiro or Luke Shaw? Just get your head down and work. That's what professionalism is. Maguire has definitely been moaning to people. Brandon Williams even going on about Maguire. It says Dazzo. Um, from last season, Maguire is the air. We've done that one from Neil as well. Barry, what if Iran... Sorry, Barry. Barry says, what if Iran said that, said that there would be war, says Barry. Look, I'll be absolutely clear here. If if Cristiano, if there was a story tomorrow saying Cristiano Ronaldo sources say that uh, you know Bruno Fernandez is the reason he's been so shit this season, and um, if he was playing up front for Man City and he swapped with Haaland, he'd be scoring all the goals. I would say something about that as well. You've got to be consistent. Um, there is a real ethos in this fan base at the moment to try and give all these players a second chance some of them don't deserve it but because of Ten Hag they are being given a second chance and some of them are grabbing that second chance and the fan base certainly wants to give them that second chance so the last thing I want to hear is any United player who's not in the team being associated with stories slagging off current United players it's just not a good look it's not what team ethic is all about and I don't know whether David De Gea takes any notice or Rafael Varane takes any notice or, you know, Bruno or anybody else takes any notice. But if you're reading that, look, if you find out about those sources tonight, you'd be looking at that and going, that's not a good look. That is not a good look. Um, so, look, Ten Hag will do something about it. I'm absolutely convinced. But realistically, it just needs to stop. It just needs, just needs to stop. Um Sticking with Ronaldo for a minute, there was a story today that Ronaldo, a quote, I think, that he not only wants to play in the World Cup, he wants to play in the Euros in um, what would be, um, what is it, 2022, 2024. So, I mean, the, the Euros are only 18 months away because the World Cup is six months later than normal. So that would mean that, obviously, Ronaldo would finish this season and then at the end of next season play in the Euros as well. So a lot of people were getting excited about that, going, what? He wants to play in the Euros. But actually, the Euros will only be 18 months after this World Cup. So um, do I think that Ronaldo will be playing in the Euros? Yeah, I don't know whether he'll be doing it as a Man United player. I uh, I think Ronaldo is a very interesting player. I still don't think we know. You, you, you get these football experts who tell you that Ronaldo's fell off. They might They might be right. He might be. He might have fell off, but I don't think he has. I, I think Ten Hag knows him better than anybody, and um, Ten Hag keeps talking about fitness. So, I think the Ronaldo that we're going to see over the next three months will decide what Ronaldo does for the next eighteen months. I think uh, Rob Dawson said it on the interview with Adam that he expects him to stay for the season. Somebody else was tweeting about it today. Um, obviously, we had Fabrizio on the show on Monday, and he said, "Look, you never know. In January, Mendes might find something for him." I certainly think if he can get back in the Champions League in January, he would go. I don't think that's going to change. But if Man United are in a race for the Champions League, he might 
he might be happy to stay and then try and get another year at United. I don't know. I, I think with Ronaldo, all I would say is he's proved people wrong so many times that if there's a choice between saying Ronaldo's finished or he'll bounce back, always go with bounce back, never write off Ronaldo. That's That should be a saying in itself. Uh, I think over the next three two months, we'll see what Ronaldo's all about because if he has got gears to go through, he's going to go through them next month into the World Cup. If he hasn't got any more gears to go through, we'll see that in the World Cup and we'll see it next month. But I sway towards the latter. I think he has got gears to go through and I think that that can only benefit Manchester United. Um, so look, I'm very interested to see. But if he thinks he's going to play in the Euros in 18 months, then I'm very happy about that because he's one of the world's greatest ever players and I want to see him performing. But yeah, very interesting to see. Very interesting to see. Um, Marvin says he's 37, of course he's finished. Was he finished three or four months ago, Marvin, when he was scoring hat-tricks and winning his games? He was 37 then. I don't. I don't think... You may end up getting proved right, but I think you're guessing. And we'll see what the truth is over the next few weeks. Um, have you seen what Cialini has commented on Maguire? Says Ian. I, I very much doubt Cialini's spoken about Maguire. If United fans hate on Ronaldo, they are not fans. He is delivered in that United shirt, unlike other players, says Palm. Look, people are, people are... I respect people's opinions, as long as they're done fairly. I respect what people say about David De Gea. I've done a video on it. You know, we do need to bring another goalkeeper in. But I also think people should respect my and other people's opinions that David De Gea is still one of the world's best shot stoppers. And with Ten Hag in charge, you can already see there's an improvement. And we need to see a lot more improvement between now and the summer, which is when the decision will be made about De Gea. We're not going to make a decision in January. We're not going to make a decision in October. And um, I think... I think I sort of feel sorry for us as a fan base sometimes because we've had so so many bad times over the over recent years that I do think people are forgetting that we've won our last four Premier League games and we have and we deserve to and we've had a very good defence so we're going to need that defence against Man City as well. I just think there's um there's a lot to be positive about at the moment um, and we should try and enjoy it while we can because there might be a lot to be negative about very, very soon. If we go to Man City and we get drilled, then suddenly the season's a worry again, isn't it? Massive game, massive game. Right, uh, Super Chat coming in from Lars. Why is Chiell Chiellini commenting on the Maguire situation? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to find something about this. If somebody's got a quote for me, I'll certainly have a look at it. Um, but I haven't uh, seen anything. Um, have a look. If I can find it. Oh. Cialini says that Maguire may not be... Oh, no. Okay. He has... Interesting. He says... Um... Maguire may not be Rio Ferdinand, but he's good enough. Um, I'm sad for Maguire's situation because he's a good player. They require too much of him just because they paid £80 million for him. He has to be the best in the world every match. It's not right. Well, Chiellini's talking about it because Italy are playing England on in 48 hours. That's why he's talking about it. Um, I, you know, well, I wouldn't wipe my arse on those opinions, to be honest with you. Chiellini's a world-class, or has been a world-class centre-back, but, I mean, that, that's just... Um, that's just fellow professionals sticking up for fellow professionals. I very much doubt Chiellini's been watching Man United for the last year. And I very much doubt if you ask Chiellini who you'd pick between Varane and Maguire, he'd pick Maguire. So I think Chiellini's points are based on international football and Italy playing England. I think that's what it's all about. So, yeah, I don't I don't pay any attention to that. Why, why would I listen to Chiellini? Wow, people will go, wow, because he's won to things and he knows more about football than you. He probably knows more about football than us, but he doesn't know more about Man United. So I would talk to a Man United fan who watches us every week over Chiellini, I'm afraid, because that's the difference between this whole nonsense argument that if you played the game, you know better than a fan. Um, I don't think he knows any. I don't think he knows better than you about Man United because I don't think he watches and consumes Man United the, the same way you do. So yeah, I've, I've got no interest in what Chiellini's got to say really, because the quest, the big question I would say to Chiellini is, Martinez is always going to start. Who are you going to pick between Varane and Maguire? See you later. Mic drop. Um, I think Maguire will play for, well for England against Italy and I think he, we need him to uh, I think he suits a back five um, I think Declan Rice is never far away and and a fellow centre-back is never far away and look Maguire's a decent centre-back I'd argue that with anybody 
Um, there was a time where I was arguing he was about he was a top five in the world centre back. See, we do get things wrong. He's a decent centre back, but he's a decent centre back in a in the right system. In a back five, he's decent. In a back four, modern is a risk. And that's as simple as it gets. Simple as it gets. Um, knowing Ball has now to do with whether or not he needs to retire. Same applies to Milner at Liverpool. Am I the only one that doesn't see De Gea as a problem at all? Says Luke. I, I don't see him as a major problem at the moment. Um, in my opinion, the reason that we are not pressing teams and playing a high line is not because of David De Gea. We're not pressing teams because we're not very good at it. Um, we've never been very good at it. Ranjit couldn't get them to do it. And I think Ten Hag is struggling to get them to do it. And it's going to take time. We're also not a possession-based team because we haven't got the players to play possession-based football. I said it the other day, you know, people seem to think that if we had a sweeper-keeper, we'd play high-line 70% football. We won't. We, haven't, we don't press well enough yet. We don't keep the ball well enough yet. I said it the other day, Scott McTominay's still averaging around 30 passes a game. Declan Rice is doing 55 at West Ham. Like, we've got to be better on the ball. We've got to be a better possession team. We've got to learn to press collectively. And, you know, we do need a keeper who can pass out from the back. Definitely better. We do need a keeper that wants to come out of their box a bit more. Definitely. But that's not the reason we're not playing like Ajax. It makes me laugh how naive some people are that they think if we change the goalkeeper to Anana or Mignon or... Unai Simon, we'd suddenly start playing like Ajax. We will not do that. We do not have the players to do it yet, or they've not been taught how to do it yet. It's going to take time, and it's certainly not on one player. We need a lot more. We need a lot more. And and a new keeper, look, thumbs up, a new keeper may well be part of it. I've never said that that's not part of it, but it's not the problem. And you will listen to some people on social media who will tell you, if we had... Um, Menion in goal we'd suddenly be playing with 70% possession passing it through the team with a high line we wouldn't we wouldn't Eriksen's the only player in that midfield who can get the ball from the midfield to the attack for a start we need people comfortable on the ball we need um, possession based chemistry and we need press based chemistry as well and we, we, we're not going to learn that at the moment because the team doesn't have the components to do that. If you got Ten Hag on this show now and said, "Can you win the league in the way that you want to play this play with that with that squad?" He'd say no. Honestly, he'd go no. He won't say it publicly, but he'd say no because he probably needs another couple of midfielders, another couple of attackers, um, another centre back, another right back, uh, and potentially a keeper as well. Chiellini needs to watch Maguire get nutmegged in the six yard box. Rugby tackle Luke Shaw in his own box, and God knows what not what not to figure out his current opinions. Says Mojo. And prediction, Maguire will start against City because Brand got invited for Fra injured for France. Haaland will destroy us and media will blame Martinez, says SK. Look, I I'm not the only one, I think, who on this international break is nervous. We are going to be, and we've not really discussed this, and it's a good point, we are going to be very lucky if we get through this international break with everybody fit. I mean, McTominay's playing tonight. Um, obviously, Fred's on international duty. Anthony Casemiro. Ronaldo, Bruno, uh, Malasia is there as well. Martinez, Varane. You know, a lot of our first team is on international duty. And Ericsson. The, there's so many we need to come back. We need Malasia to come back. We need, yeah, I mean, not, not injured, I mean. Malasia, Martinez, Varane, they, they're essential. We need them to come back and come through international duty unscathed. Uh, Ericsson's essential as well. Casemiro, McTominay, Anthony, Ronaldo. Are we going to get away with it? Are we going to get away with every one of those players coming back? Um, it can happen. Fingers crossed it will happen. But yeah, there are... It's not always the way. And we really do need that, that, that everybody to come back and be ready for that Man City game. But we'll, have to, we'll just have to have fingers crossed. Uh, Anthony says expect the booze when he touches the ball for England and then Pundit saying it's shameful Pundits can't defend Maguire with his comments and form I hope he doesn't get booed at all I don't want him to get booed for Man United I don't want him to get booed for England I think that the England booing is silly um, to be honest with you I don't I don't really understand it he actually plays well for England 
I don't think there's many people out there that, that wouldn't agree with that. But look, as I said, I hope that there is something that comes out from Harry Maguire over the next 24 hours that says, I don't, I haven't said those things. I don't agree with those things because it's just so easy to come out and do that. And if you don't say something, then it just, it's just left in the public arena that sources close to Harry Maguire have said this. So Harry Maguire come out and say, no, I didn't. Guess let's just move on from it. I don't care whether it's Harry Maguire. I don't care whether it's Ronaldo. I don't care whether it's Luke Shaw. I don't care whether it's Scott McTominay. I just don't want it. I don't want it full stop. We've got a new manager. There's a lot going on at the club. There's a lot of work that needs to go on at the club. And I think after last season, where you've got fans singing You're Not Fit to Wear the Shirt, and for the first time in a long time, and I think it was right, the fans were turning on the players instead of the manager. It was toxic last season and it angered a lot of fans. I don't want to be that back there and I don't think anyone anyone wants to be back there. We just want Man United players who respect the club, respect the fans and work hard and don't get ideas above their station about blame shifting and putting stories out there because it just angers fans. We just don't want it. And it's happened. It's, it's out there. Kill it. Kill it. Come out and kill it. Come out and say, I didn't say those things. Come out and say, that's nothing to do with me. Come, I, I would never say that. As captain of the club, he should do that because other players will take notice and maybe they won't do it either. So there's a responsibility there. Let, let's hope that, that you know, common sense prevails, really. Um, yeah. Right. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Make sure you smash a like on the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, I have been promising you an interview with Ben Foster, which we've got ready to go, which we're going to put out tomorrow, which is all about the international break and is really interesting. So we've got that for you to go out tomorrow as well. Don't forget Boohoo Man, 40% off. Scan that QR code with your phone. Goldbridge is the code, 40% off. You can get something like this from the Boohoo Man Active range delivered to your door. Loads of stuff at reasonable prices. Big shout out to Boohoo Man. Uh, big up Mark, love from Kenya, says Jude. Well, big up to you. I really, I've really enjoyed the show, the eight o'clock shows on the international break so far, and it's flying by. To be fair, I'm really enjoying it. So, thank you for all your company again, and uh, take care whatever you're doing, all all of you worldwide. And I will speak to you um, Thursday tomorrow. So we're we're nearly at weekend, aren't we? Oh, I've got that side men game on Saturday. Goldbridge is going to have to pull out a managerial masterclass. I'm, I'm finding more and more out by the hour about their their team and our team. I tell you what. It's like Man City, them, against bloody Macclesfield Towners. It's, it's going to be tough, but uh, let's see. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Take care. I'll speak to you all in a bit.